So the big tax question is this, how do wealthy people keep their money working for them when selling their business, real estate, or other highly appreciated assets without paying hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in tax? What if we as business and real estate owners who have poured blood, sweat, and tears to growing our wealth and who didn't hire expensive tax attorneys and CPAs to map out an exit strategy knew their secrets? Instead of recreating the wheel, why can't we just model the way they deferred 30 to 50% in tax, paid off debt, funded their next business dream, and most importantly, leave a financial legacy to give to the causes we believe in most? What if their secrets weren't complicated at all? And you just need a guide who is a few steps ahead of you. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brett Swartz, and welcome to Capital Gains Tax Solutions. Hey, welcome everybody uh, to a, a joint uh, kind of podcast slash workshop. Um, my name is Brett Swartz. I'm the host of the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast, also a commercial real estate broker with EXP. I'm with my good friend, John Dwalskin. John, can you introduce yourself? Because I won't hey. do it justice. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm John Dwalskin. I am a business coach and um, uh, I, I work with solopreneurs to Fortune 100 companies and everything in between. And um, used to be in the commercial real estate space for about 13 years. And uh, you and I decided to kind of jump on and do this interactive workshop. So I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. And, and John is being uh, modest there. He, he was a manager um, of the number one or one of the top real estate uh, investment firms, Marcus and Millichap. And that's actually part of our beginning with myself as well in my training. But, um, you know, we learned a lot at Marcus and Millichap, John, about yeah. what to do, how to close deals. I like to say it's like the Navy SEALs of, 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 of investment brokerage business. And uh, it's, it's the foundation of my of my entire career. Learned a lot of great things, and so we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of commercial real estate brokers. Just a few things we obviously can't cover too much, but uh, the first one, John, is the value of representation. Yeah. So, John, when when you hear that, what what comes to mind, and what is uh, as a commercial real estate broker or somebody who's looking to uh, level up their game? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the value of representation? Yeah. Well, I think when you're when you're talking about you know a value prop, it's really really important to connect to a couple things. One, the the value are based on benefits, not features. I think many salespeople sell in features versus benefits, and so I think it's that's first and foremost is really kind of like saying, okay, as I speak, am I speaking value benefits or am I speaking in features, which don't really work. Um, next, what type of value am I actually bringing to the table? Meaning, um, you know, am I, are people able to understand and quantify, you know, what I'm saying next is understanding kind of the benefits of you and the benefits of the company, right? They go hand in hand. Sometimes people weigh too much on themselves and they're important, but they need to talk be able to talk about why them, um, and why the company. And here's a really big one too, the importance of um, speaking in stories, right? Too many times we learn through stories and lessons and through clients' perspectives. And so we don't necessarily wanna talk about, hey, I think this and I think this and you should do this. If we're, if we're doing all the things that we just talked about, then the conversation and the, the consciousness and the frequency and the vibration of that talk is much higher. Absolutely. So. You talked about features, features and benefits, right? And then talking um, and seeing things in stories, as well as um, not just selling yourself, but selling the the entire company, right? And the other part about the value, the value piece, something I learned early on at Marcus Millichap, it was a good, it was, it was one of the mentors in the office, and he said, the moment you know more about a person's property that you're calling on or about a, some properties next door or something that's going to solve their challenge, that's the moment you start to add value to that person that you're reaching yeah. out to, that you're trying to represent, right? It's the value of representation, meaning that you right. have a chance to actually solve a problem. So talk about that, John, on your, when you first started out or when you're training brokers in your office with cold calling and reaching out and connecting with somebody, tell us how detailed and specialized everyone was. 
Well, I think I think one of the things that's important to remember, Brett, is that the goal of a cold call is simply to get a meeting. And you know, it, it's it's nice to be able to say where we are right now that um, meetings are back. Right, we're in this endemic where meetings, you know, people are starting to go on meetings again, which is great. I mean, I'm 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 loving it, and I'm loving it for people because uh, I I think people are really are missing it. But to be able to articulate what you specialize in and how you can specifically help someone, I think starts with a lot of the questions that you ask to position yourself as an expert. And so it's it's not necessarily telling, it's asking and understanding the, the questions that get the, the conversation moving so people know you're an expert just through the questions that you actually ask. Right. If I do it right, I don't have to tell them I'm an expert. It shows through my questions and then my backup questions because I understand what I'm talking about. And then I can not only answer, you know, what's coming at me, but I can also kind of incorporate a lot of my expertise as I answer a question. So in the beginning, when you don't necessarily A, know the questions or B, have the track record, right? And you're you're just trying to get your business going, John. What what were the questions that you were asking, or are you are you encouraging, are you encouraging the brokers who are getting trained to ask, and how are they leveraging their mentors, right, to be able to move business forward to get that meeting? Because you're right, the goal, of the cold calls to get a meeting, right? In the beginning of my career, my biggest one of the biggest mistakes I was having is I was trying to have the meeting on the phone. Right? I'm so excited about this new piece of knowledge that I know or this deal that closed or this ways to raise rents or this way to market better or this tax referral strategy or whatever. And I'm just telling the whole meeting on the phone. And they're on the other line going, wow, this guy's gave me some really cool stuff. Great. I'm going to take that to my other guy over here that I already know or my CPA or whatever. Right. Thanks for the value. And and boom, hang up. Right. So connect that dot of of asking the question, listening for the window of opportunity and, and then um, leveraging the mentor to get the meeting. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work backwards because leveraging the mentor is where it really starts, right? If you don't have a mentor, you got to get a mentor. And if you can't get a mentor, then you need to hire a coach, <laughs> right? And I'm not necessarily, that's not a self-promotion, but, or you got to, you've got to do something because I don't think you can grow in the business without mentorship. It's, it is, there's, you know, there's a lot of great books, but no book you can read other than doing the work every single day and being mentored on all the different nuances. And so it starts with the nuances. It starts with role playing every single day. To me, you know, anybody in the commercial, anybody in the residential real estate space needs to be role playing every day, whether it be five, 10, 15 minutes, that is absolutely key. Because as you're role playing, you're, you're, you're getting prepped for the calls. So before I hit the calls, I'm always role playing a little bit to get kind of my muscles moving. So I know, okay, I'm role playing with somebody and I'm, I'm testing out the question. Um, I wrote out three questions that people asked me yesterday that I didn't know the answers to. Um, and then I wrote them out. I went to my mentor and I said, Hey, how would you answer these questions? And then how would you ask questions to get in front of them having to ask you these questions? So, right. So, and then, and so that's kind of like the first step in my opinion, because if you don't, if you can't do that step, it's much, it's very hard to understand, to listen to the windows of opportunity. Do you know what I'm saying? I absolutely, John. And I actually want to walk through all of this. We're going to, we're going to live role play here in a second. Um, do you have a live link? Cause we have people that are trying yeah, to get I just, in. I just uh, put it in the chat, in box. the chat there. Okay. So let me do this. Well, and, I have uh, people who are in, but they're, um, I'm only putting people on screen whose pictures are here. So the screen's not covered with just empty screens. Yeah. So get, get your like, video on, folks. Like, like, there we go. There we no, go, Steven. There we go, Andrew. You know, if they, I, I, this is a show your face type of, I think, workshop. Live, live link here. Okay. So um, we're talking, um, so we're talking about interest generator, right? So some folks might not even know what that is. But John, define interest generator, and then we're going to do a role play with that interest generator to show people what, what, what that looks like. Can, can you define what that is, John? Yeah, well, an interest generator is a line that basically creates interest, right? It creates a spark of something of somebody saying, I want to learn more, 
right? This is something I want to, I want to learn more. And that's the key. Um, you know, so it's, it's really, really important that if you want to get somebody's attention today, it's really, really hard, right? 80% of people don't answer the phone. 80% of calls, um, don't get returned. We are all in the business of getting an, um, people's attention. We're all in the business of trying to capture people's attention. And so if we don't do it in a, in a way that we can create interest, that it's going to be really, really hard to um, get them to want to engage in a discussion with us. So an interest generator, for example, um, especially right now in the commercial space, um, could be, um, hey, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Client, with everything that's going on in the, um, in the market today, many clients I'm talking to, uh, because of the tax changes that are happening, specifically potential 1031 things about to change, potentially changing, if they don't see themselves holding on to a piece of property over the next one to three years, they're thinking about selling, right? So Absolutely. you're, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's, that's exactly right. And so you, you need to have something that's a going to grab their attention. B that's going to be potentially actionable is the other part about it, right? Can they actually, can they start to do something about it or start to plan to do something about it? For example, right now, Biden is proposing to, eliminate or limit the 1031 exchange to a certain number. Guess what? It's a great interest generator. Hey, John, um, I saw you've owned this property for five years. Curious. Have you thought about buying or selling anything in the last, uh, in the last six months? And John yeah. might say, mm, John? yeah, maybe. Yeah. I've thought about it with uh, everything that's been changing in the market. Yeah. And the reason I'm asking you that is I know you get a lot of brokers that are asking you about buying or selling, but Biden is proposing to take away or limit the 1031 exchange. How might that affect your plan with your capital gains tax deferral? Should you sell? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I don't really, I, you know, I haven't, are we role playing right now? Yeah. No. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I'm not really sure. I haven't really thought about it. Um, and uh but it is something that I probably need to think about, but I don't have time to think about it right now because I'm just so busy. Okay. And so now at this point, someone might say, let me close for the meeting, right? But he just said he's so busy. This is the point I might want to, I might want to bring up a little bit more pain. So John, you say you're so busy. Um, it, management, time, what, what, what are you referring to as being so, so busy? Because maybe I can help you out. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I just, I just don't have time to think about it. I just, you know, my days are just swamped right now, especially with the world coming back. And owning all these apartments, right. And all the rent control laws and all the challenges with trying to evict people, man, I have a, a property down the street with a client and he's got like four tenants that haven't paid a rent and he says they could pay on, they could pay, but they're just not paying anything. Are you having challenges with, with, with renters just kind of squatting and not paying and taking advantage of the system? Um, no, not too badly. Not too badly. Yeah. We and so the, back to the sales part. So that didn't really go anywhere, right? So that little thing didn't go anywhere. So now back to the sales thing. Yeah. If you were to sell John to get out of this busyness of, of life, why would you sell? I mean, is there a reason to even to sell right now? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I, I don't know if I have the energy. I'm, you know, I'm older and I just, I don't have the energy to kind of go through the next cycle. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. Uh, right. we just, we just closed the deal for a similar client and, uh, you know, he's owned it for 20, 30 years. Yeah. His, his, his biggest thing was he wants to spend time with the grandkids. He wants to, he wants to, you know, de-stress his life. He's made his wealth and he's kind of just ready to, to retire. Yeah. Um, you know, would, um, would be, would looking at, you know, how we help craft that deal for him and, and where he's at, would that be a value to you if I just sent you the deal that we just closed? Yeah, I think so. Excellent. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to send that to you, but even better yet, um, can I come by and see you? I know that's kind of forward, but I'd love the opportunity just to meet you in person. Could I come by and just share the story with you? Cause I think it's valuable along with the Biden thing where it's going on because he's facing that too. He's even considering, you know, just paying the tax because it's going to go up by another 20%. So if I came by, would you give, would you give me 10 minutes? I know you're super busy, but would you give me 10 minutes just to walk you through what it is, what it's not, and, and how you can prepare to, 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 to not get trapped by capital gains tax? Yeah, of course. Cool. All right, great. Yeah. What time works for you? Tuesday or Thursday at 10 or 12? 10 works great. 
Okay, so now I'm going to open it up for a couple questions. Uh, Michelle, LaDonda, Mindy, I'm looking at people who have Janice, who have videos on. And if you want to ask your question, jump on your video. Um, any questions about what we just said so far? And, uh, and then we can kind of dial in on that. It would be good to hear from you guys or gals. I think it would be perfect if I had that example of that deal. That would be... Um, pretty convenient to show and prove and, and, and close on something like that. Yeah. You see how I leveraged my mentor or the deal that I just did as a way to build credibility, but also to add value because I want to know about that deal down the street that just closed. I bring instant credibility because I know more about that deal obviously because I was in the deal than John knows, even though, yeah. they, you know, so you're right, LaDonna. So that goes back to John's original point the mentor and the person who's done it, like if you're going to get brain surgery or, 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 or ACL surgery, right? You don't want the doctor who's never done it, right? You want to, you want the doctor who has, so you're absolutely leveraging and working with a business partner aligned. And guess what I'm going to do when I go to that meeting with John, am I going by myself? No. The moment I get off the phone call, I'm saying, I should probably already have my mentor schedule in front of me, right? I'm booking it based upon his schedule or her schedule and now they're going with me, right, John? Tell us about bringing the mentor to the meeting. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's critical. You know, the, the last thing you want to do is be in hot water and not know where to go. I think people are fine with, um, um, I'm just going to, I'm just getting a little bit of feedback here. I think people are fine with um, wanting, with, um, with people who are new in any business, but you're going to, you don't want yourself in a situation where, <laughs> You get to, um, you know, you get to the meeting and you don't know the questions to ask. You don't know how to answer certain questions. Um, and a mentor can accelerate a meeting to get to a potential next step, a potential POV, a potential proposal, a potential listing, a potential buy side, right? There's so many elements because, because the mentor has ears that have heard something, you know, dozens, hundreds, or thousands of times already, and they know where to take the conversation in a, in a, in a different, more effective manner. And so what, and then the mentee can kind of sit back and watch and learn because you learn by watching in this business and then take notes of the questions that they ask, how they respond to things and start to almost like get ahead of like, okay, the, the client asked a question. This is how I would answer it. I'm saying it in my head. And then this is how the mentor answered it. Okay. Well, it was either far apart or close together. And so then you want to be taking notes. So after the meeting, you and your mentor can talk and say, okay, why did you answer it this way? What did this mean? I would have answered it this way. If I did, what would have happened? And you take that experiential real life stuff and you dissect it and you'll yeah. learn from it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Any other questions right now or thoughts on the interest generator, listening for windows of opportunity, right? Closing for the meeting, bringing on a mentor, any questions on that that we can help with anybody right now? If not, I'll just keep talking, which is great too. So <laughs> I want to go to the um, to the point of understanding that it takes massive repetition, okay? Yeah. Massive repetition, getting to the plate and swinging the bat. I'm telling you, cold call like a maniac, right? Even though the fear and the anxiety and oh my gosh, right, is there, you... And I'm telling to myself, I, even before I got on video, I started a podcast or a YouTube or sold my first commercial deal. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, right? Except for I had good trainers and good mentors that I knew I could have the confidence to lean on who, when I bring them to the meeting, they're going to do that. But on that cold call, I am calling, by the way, is another part of it too, which I want to role play with John here to demonstrate this, um, that you want to make sure that when you're calling somebody, you're saying their name and to me with enthusiasm and as if you know them, John, I don't know if you know that, but like, let's, let's do this right now. I want to kind of role play and then talk about it. So yeah. ring, ring. Uh, this is John. John. Yes. This is Brett Swartz, uh, EXP commercial multifamily broker. How are you today? Doing well. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. The reason for my call is a, we just sold a property. B, there's an interest generator with, with, with Biden changing this thing. C, whatever it might be that you're talking about. And I think it's very valuable of you to hear about this. And I'm just curious, have you considered the implications for what might happen if the 1031 gets taken away? Yeah, you know, my team is talking about it and we're not sure, but we're in deep talks about it. Really kind of looking at our portfolio. 
Yeah. So I know that you own 20 deals, you know, and, and one of them down the street, uh, and by the way, next to it just sold values that are all time highs. And so I'm curious on your guys' side, what, what, what are some of the thoughts or some of the things that you guys are considering? Um, I don't know. We're, we're considering, you know, what we want to buy and what we want to sell over the next, you know, uh, 12 to 18 months. Okay. Anything in particular that you're thinking about buying or selling? Mm, maybe a property and moving into some single tenant net lease. Um, okay. Maybe a property moving to single tenant net lease. Um, the, the, um, the ability to sell and defer might be gone with Biden, as you probably know. Um, so when you say that, are you planning on selling and paying the tax and doing it? Or what is your plan in case that goes away? I'm not sure. Okay. Would you like me to come out and show you how we can eliminate the need for the 1031 exchange or find you uh, a way to defer tax not using a 1031? Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't know there was another way. So if there is, yeah, let, yeah I'd love to. Okay, great. What time works for you? All I need is 30 yeah. minutes of your time. Thursday or Friday at 12 or noon? Sound perfect. Noon is great. Great. So you notice I didn't, by the way, if you guys know me, I sell the deferred sales trust, right? It's, I train brokers on how to do that. I didn't say deferred sales trust, right? And I didn't even, I, all I said was, I'll come meet you and tell you about it, right? We'll talk about it. We'll discuss it, right? So you don't want to give away the, the juice. Also, in the very beginning, I said his name like I know him. I'm saying it with confidence. I'm saying it with enthusiasm, right? And I'm trying to invite him into the conversation. When I first call people, you're like, hello, hello, John? Yeah. Hey, uh, this is Brett. I'm, I'm calling you from, uh, from my company here. And I no, I want to come out like I have something of value for you, John. And I want to invite him in with energy and enthusiasm, right? And confidence. And until you're seeing that and hearing that, it's hard to pick up on that. But again, at Marcus and Millichap, when I was watching people do this, um, you start to develop your own voice and your own way of in your own rhythm of doing things, but it's important to come come knowing that you have something of value to offer. Now, if you don't have something of value to offer, you don't have that interest rate or you don't have that mentor. Again, it's hard to have the confidence to make these calls, right? Does that make sense, John? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I want to go back to and just comment one thing when you talked about massive repetition. You know, this business is a numbers game, and commitment to and some of the things I'm going to echo some of the things you said. You know the courage, the fear, the confidence, the this that comes with massive repetition, and that massive repetition, whether it's you know 20, 30, 40, whatever your number is per day, lower the bar and hit your numbers. It's a it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game, and if you have if you're hitting your metrics every day and you have the mentorship and you're role playing and you're practicing, it's still going to take one to three years to really <laughs> build a. A, a consistent pipeline of the of business, right? And so it's a lot of hard work. And so you got everything we're talking about today is so important to be in alignment with all of it um, on a consistent basis. Yep, 100%. So we're going to be back next week. And we'll talk a little bit about underwriting. We'll talk a little bit about um, um, uh, the actual meeting that you're going to go on. Okay. And so, uh, but this is recorded. You can share this with folks. Um, any, any last questions? We got 60 seconds for one question. If anyone has a question. That's okay. If you don't, we're not, we're, John and I aren't scared of it. We can, or we're, uh, don't, uh, if you're open, Steven, we wish we could have saw you, Andrew, Gail, but LaDonna, Mindy, Michelle, Janice, and I'm not sure if there's anyone else, but um, we appreciate, oh, three rules of interest generators. Um, news to clients, relevant to client, lead to conversion about property from M&M sales training notes. Okay, so Janice, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm not sure if there's a question there, but uh, yes. Okay, that's all. So I think we're off. We're good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. You have just listened to another information-packed episode of Capital Gains Tax Solutions with Brett Swartz. We hope you enjoyed today's show and found it helpful. Visit CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com to access the show notes and to access more resources. Don't forget to leave a review and join us again next time.